Hi guys. This is not necessarily anything to do with carnivore. So if that's all you're interested is in what happened on a carnivore basis, probably not gonna be that video today. What kind of video is it gonna be? I have no idea. Right now, in the United States, it's Sunday evening, late, and it's Monday morning, technically Memorial Day here in Thailand. So, as I'm in the pool, thoroughly enjoying myself, getting in a little bit of stretching and exercise. I was given thought. Howdy. I interrupt this video out of hell, I don't know. It's Memorial Day. I recorded this video in the pool and after doing some editing, I decided I should put a cautionary break because I get into some political opinions, some, some things that I'm thinking about the United States. And I'm positive that some people will agree with me. And I'm positive some people will think I'm an idiot, especially if you're from the United States. You know how divided everybody is because they only listen to people in their own silos. So I decided as I'm doing this editing to create this little warning that if you don't want to hear anything about it, just click off, find another video and if you do watch it to the end, give me your opinion, because unlike some people, I enjoy keeping an open mind. And uh, I'd love to hear your opinions. But if you're here for strictly carnivores, I said in the very beginning of this video, this wasn't one. This is more of a Memorial Day, my thoughts. So continue the video or click off. Either way, I'll be happy that you came by. Thank you. I was given thought to a lot of things and I don't know. You know, everybody takes a holiday. And nobody knows what the holiday is for. But that's okay, I guess. The shame of the matter is the people who celebrate Memorial Day in the United States, since it's a U.S. holiday, they don't, they haven't benefited. Because after all these silly wars and all the men and women who gave their life to the service of the military, and we thank them for their service. A lot of that was unnecessary. And when you think about what we ended up with as a country right now in the United States, it's not the country I grew up in. And uh, what's gonna happen after after the next change of political leadership. There's, there's a word, political leadership. Can that even be said? 
in the United States that we have leadership? Has anyone actually provided leadership? Or are they really providing representation for the people who are greasing their wheels? Polite way of saying it. But there must be a reason why so many congressmen and senators come into Congress or Senate, spend a few years, and then end up multi-multi-millionaires, some of them not seven figures, not eight figures, some of them nine figures, worth of wealth when they leave. Hmm. How's that work? Well, I guess I'm just jealous because I wasn't a politician with my hands out like this, saying, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I, I'll, I'll talk about what you want me to talk about. We'll try and get what you want done. You know, it's uh, sort of like this TikTok issue where, they're, where they passed a law that says TikTok has to sell or they're going to be banned from the United States. Well, I have to admit, TikTok has very little redeeming value amongst children. But there's a lot of people who seem to like it and and use the hell out of TikTok for entertainment value, for shopping value. So you have to ask yourself, when Zuckerberg spent $400 million in the last presidential election in the United States, what they call political zuck bucks. Who benefits if if uh, TikTok and their short form videos go away? Hmm, let me think. Oh, Facebook and Instagram Reels. Ha, amazing. Amazing. And Zuck gave all that money to promote Democratic for the Democratic Party politicians and the presidency. And now they ban TikTok. <coughs> I'm not saying TikTok's a good business or a bad business. But they picked one business and they said, oh, that's so terrible. You know, China can use all this information against us that they collect in TikTok. The fact that my grandson may or may not like watching videos of young people doing tricks on skateboards or other stupid things is surely a threat to the security of the United States. The fact that some person actually stopped scrolling on an ad for an electric razor, my God, what a national security threat that is. What a bunch of shit. Now, if the government wants to say, we don't want to have anybody in the federal government who puts TikTok on their phones and comes to work. Hey, that's okay. Fine. Do it. If you got a concern about that. But this is just another political corruption grab. And why did it get put into the same political law, a bill, as funding for Ukraine and funding for Israel because it couldn't pass on its own. 
they added that in so that they could get rid of TikTok because they know China's not going to sell it. I'll take a bite out of this hat if China sells that technology. China don't need to sell it. China is running the show, not Bike Dance, who, who supposedly owns it or whatever. So uh, you know, they put in a, a they put in the bill because they knew that certain people were were really wanting funding for Israel. Other people were really wanting funding for Ukraine. My God, we care about everybody's borders, but the United States. You know, I mean, just let 10 million illegal immigrants come in. Well, nobody's doing anything. And the people who are really running the show was the now Department of Homeland Security. You know, that Department of Homeland Security was a cabinet position created after the uh, after the World Trade Centers were hit by the airplanes. They had to create a new agency, Homeland Security, which if I had my way, they would Whoever comes in, to, if they get a new president, whoever that is, they ought to just tear that organization down and just eliminate it. Because they have proven time and time again that they have no interest in the security of the homeland. I mean, just do away with it. FBI, do away with it. Why we need the FBI? Every state has their own state police and state criminal investigation units. Give the power back to the states. Somebody robs a bank in Kansas, let the Kansas state police handle it. Somebody robs a bank in Missouri across the border, let the Kansas State Police talk to the Missouri State Police and give them the information about what the suspects were and let their two state agencies handle it. The FBI it's as corrupt as corrupt can be. I mean tear some of this stuff down that doesn't work crazy things. Anyway, for now, I'm still a citizen of the United States. I'm just not proud of the United States. And anybody who doesn't like that, well, don't listen. I, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just asking somebody to think about it. Yeah, I, I think I'm right. But think about it. And I don't care who I make mad about this. You know, I'd love them to fix the United States. I'd love them to make it a place where, where actually the American dream that was there when I was born is back again. I come back, but it's not there anymore, folks. It's just not, you know. Donald Trump's going to make a way better president than Biden, but he sucks. I mean, I, I'm just telling you, we could do better, but he's like, Biden's a one out of ten. Trump's a six out of ten. There's uh, there's there's people who 
would be better. Trump's got a lot of good positions. I'll give him that. Uh, but it's time that we get somebody under 80 years old running these shows. Get rid of the leaders in the Senate. Get rid of presidents running. You know, there's a in the uh, Constitution, person has to be 35 years old before they're allowed to run for president. And back then, the average lifespan of an individual wasn't 90. If they knew today that that life was going to get that much, they were probably wise enough 200 years ago they could have had an extra line. And after you reach the age of 60, you're no longer allowed to run for president. It's just we need young ideas, innovative ideas, and we need someone who, you know, actually understands technology. I mean, Nancy Pelosi and, and McConnell, yeah, these people aren't even in the, their right minds. Both of them together couldn't put together a 12-pack of beer without a few cans missing. But I digress. I just hope that something happens to, to bring America back again. And if that doesn't happen, then there's plenty of other places in the world to hang out. And with that, I will say, well, I won't say. I'll be kind to the economic powers of be. But diversify, folks. Don't, don't keep all your money in one bank. Don't keep all your stocks in one brokerage house. You know, people are being unbanked because of political opinions. Uh, they close bank accounts and say, we just don't want your business. You didn't do anything wrong. We just don't want your business. So if you got a little something saved up, some assets, I strongly suggest that you put them in different financial institutions. If you're really aggressive, go find yourself somewhere outside the United States to put a little money. And if you want to learn and spend a couple hundred hours to understand the history of money, the history of economics in the world, the meaning of hard money and sound money, Maybe you'll want to live on a Bitcoin standard, which is universal. You can take, it, you can go to almost any country on earth and figure out a way to convert some Bitcoin to some cash to live, if you have it. And not only that, but it's going to outrun inflation because the more money the more fiat currency that the governments print out of thin air, the more people are going to run to a hard currency that doesn't deflate, doesn't debase, doesn't lose buying power. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that the price of an average home in 2010, it would have took 666 Bitcoins to buy one. The price of the average 
home right now in the United States, it would now take six Bitcoin to buy an average priced home in the United States, not 666. So, I said 2010, I really meant 2015. The statistic I saw was like 2015. It was 666 Bitcoin for the average price home. I'm sitting up here and looking at, my God, this place is just filled with little geckos. I'm just waiting for one to come up here and tell me in 15 minutes or less I can find better insurance. But anyway, Life on a Bitcoin Standard, excellent book to read. Creature from Jekyll Island, excellent book to read. Uh, price of, Cost of Tomorrow. Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth. Excellent book to read. Anyway, this is some rantings from the pool. If you make it to the end, maybe you've uh, you got some brain food. A little bit to feed your brain with. If I can uh, be of any help, Ask me a question in the comments. Let me know you stayed to the end. You have a wonderful Memorial Day. That's all, folks.